So we will continue. And we have been discussing about different types of uh, online buyers. And next to this, uh, I will go through uh, the buying process and how various digital technologies and online marketing activities can be used to influence customers or to assist customers at different stages of the buying process. So here you have uh, uh, stages in the buying process. And here are some of the uh, internet marketing techniques that you can use to impact or to assist customers at each of these stages. So the first stage uh, of the buying process is the customer is unaware of your, of your products. And at this stage, your goal is to generate awareness, to, to help these customers become aware of your products. And we can use uh, different internet marketing te techniques, such as uh, displaying ads uh, or, or on platforms such as uh, Facebook or Google Ads or on 30 part uh, websites. The aim is to generate awareness. So you are conducting marketing activities at this stage to inform your potential customers about your products. The second stage is customers are aware of your products, are, are, are aware of the product need, but they want to get to know more about it. So these are typically customers that know what they want and they are looking around in the web to find uh, a suitable offering for their, for their need. And at this stage, you can use techniques such as search engine marketing. We, we will discuss uh, in detail about se uh, search engine optimization. I introduced the concept uh, when we, t we discussed chapter two, but today we will go uh, in detail how it works and how you can uh, actually implement search engine optimization in your business. But the goal here is to increase the visibility of your business in the web uh, space. So whenever these uh, potential customers are looking for uh, suitable products for their needs, you want them to find you first. And that's where uh, search engine optimization and search engine marketing in general comes into, into the uh, frame. And the third stage is they have uh, identified the products that they need. Now they want to compare different uh, suppliers who they should uh, buy. And at this stage, you can help them by ensuring your presence on aggregators, directories, and other intermediaries. Aggregators are price comparison uh, sites. So you want to be present in price comparison sites so that when such customers who are trying to compare offers from different suppliers, they can easily see you and compare you with other um, offerings or compare your products with other uh, offerings to see whether this can be uh, suitable for them. But if you are not present on, say, a price comparison sites or on directories and other intermediaries, then you are likely to lose uh, those sales because that's where such uh, customers who are aware of what they want and they know where to, uh, to how to compare customers, that's where they will look into. And then the fourth stage is uh, evaluation. So a customer, after identifying different suppliers, they want to evaluate the different offerings that are presented to them. And you can help them by providing them with detailed information about your products. And this information has to be online because that's where they are looking for and that's where they are comparing uh, different offerings. So you want to provide detailed information about your products so that customers can know exactly what they are uh, about to buy or they can easily compare your offerings with other uh, offerings. And then the fifth stage is uh, purchase. So that's the customer that has made up uh, uh, his or her mind and they want to buy. So you want to make sure that the purchase process is easy. So this could be, say, one page payment as uh, the case of uh, Amazon, where they have a one click uh, payment to make it very convenient for uh, repeat customers. 
you can provide o o uh, offline options and uh, other alternatives that will make it easier for customers to buy your product because we know that the offering might appear appealing to your uh, to the customers if but if the purchase process is complicated someone may just decide to drop your offering and go to some uh, to another uh, business where the purchase process is easy and after the purchase we you want to maintain this relationship so you want to offer uh, post uh, purchase services for instance helping these customers with the usage of the products uh, they, they have uh, uh, bought from you uh, providing the, with the uh, relevant content uh, on your website regarding more information ab about the product they have uh, bought and continuing to interact with these uh, customers. So at any stage uh, of the buying process, these are some of the uh, marketing techniques that you can use uh, to enhance the experience of your uh, customers. Now, we know that one of the challenges uh, that on online businesses face is the lack of physical evidence when it comes to purchasing on online. That the things that we buy online uh, do not have physical evidence. And this uh, has an implication when it comes to uh, trust, which means you need to provide signals that will help uh, customers uh, to, to identify you as uh, a trustworthy service provider. And here are some of the signals or cues that you can use uh, to, to, to enhance uh, the, the, the image of your business, to enhance the trustworthiness of your uh, business. And some of these include uh, brand familiarity. That is, the stronger your brand is, the more likely that people will perceive it as tr trustworthy. And usually, people would pr prefer to buy from well-known brands. Your site design can give a signal of, what, uh, of the quality of service someone should uh, uh, expect. So you need to create a very uh, high quality uh, uh, site. If you can't do it yourself, consult uh, experts, but uh, you don't want to have a slobby website that will scare people away because this is one of the signal that will tell what kind of uh, quality people should expect from your uh, offering. The type of content that you have on your website can also tell uh, what, uh, of the, what kind of quality customers can uh, expect. Accreditation. Accreditation is uh, obtaining certification or approval from authorities. So whether it's, if it's relevant in your case, for instance, certifying your services, this could be either consulting services, whether educational services, or whatever service you provide. If there is a, a accreditation authority or approval that you can obtain, this is uh, very good because it provides a signal to customers that you are a trustworthy uh, business. And also recommendation from your existing customers. So you want to encourage your customer, your existing com customers to recommend your business. We will discuss this uh, as we now, as I talked about the net promoter uh, score. So, in connection to what I just said, where you want to have uh, online ca customers that will recommend your business, we have what we call the net promoter uh, score. And typically, how this works is um, the question whether your customer will recommend you to other customers or not. So this is the measurement, uh, measuring to what extent your existing customers uh, are willing to promote you, to, uh, to, to promote or to recommend your business to other companies. And the net pr promoter score typically is the difference between the percentage of promoters and detractors. Now, who are these? Usually, you will create uh, a sort of questionnaire in a scale of 0 to 10. And you're asking your customers whether they are willing to recommend you to other people. And someone should indicate to what extent are they willing to recommend your business uh, to someone else. And this ranges from 0 to 10. Whether where 0 is they are not willing at all, 
to recommend your business, and 10 is that they are very willing to recommend your business. But the interpretation of this is as follows. Those who cycle either 9 or 10 are those we call promoters, that these are people that you can consider very willing to, pro uh, to recommend your business to other people. And then you have passive. These are neutral people. They are, you know, they, are, they, they, are not, they don't say that they will recommend or they will not. So they are somewhere in between. And then you have detractors. These are people that you can consider that they are not likely uh, to recommend your business to other people. So the difference between the percentage of these, because this will be administered across uh, many uh, customers. So the percentage of pro promoters minus per percentage of detractors is what we have the net promoter uh, score. How do we use uh, this data? Both promoters and detractors are useful. To know about people that are willing to recommend uh, your business is useful. And also to know those who are not willing to recommend your business is useful. Uh, and this is as follow. By knowing who are willing to recommend your business, we can, you can do what we call facilitation of online advocates. For instance, you can make it easy for those who are, want to recommend uh, your business to say, uh, forward, for example, an email to their friends, or you can have a button on your uh, website where people can recommend the, your products to, to, to other people. And you have to make a follow-up, for instance, knowing why they would like to recommend uh, to other people. And this is information, be, uh, this uh, is useful because by knowing why someone uh, is satisfied, then you will know how, where uh, to strengthen uh, your, your services, to continue uh, to build a, a service on these uh, customers, to continue to provide high quality uh, service on these customers. But also, you want to know about detractors. That is, you want to know why someone would not recommend uh, your products or your business to, 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 to other uh, people. So you want to uh, employ a, a team uh, in your organization where you will find reasons why these customers are not satisfied and they will not recommend you to uh, someone else. But sometimes these individuals will not say it to you that they, they are not happy with your service. They might say it somewhere else. And that's why we have what we call reputation management tools. These are software applications that we have today. You can track mentions about your business or about your products across uh, the internet. So when people speak negatively about your uh, products, it's possible to track. W whether this happens on social media or anywhere else, it's, e it's possible to track as long as it happens in the, in the net. And once you identify uh, such negative uh, mentions, you want to act on them. That is either by responding. So if it's someone spreading bad news about your business, say on Facebook, you want to show up and defend yourself. Or if it's a, something is a mistake you have done, uh, you want to show up and correct uh, about what uh, people say negatively about your business. So knowing about who is satisfied and who is not is important because that helps you to improve uh, the quality of service that you offer to your uh, customers. And this brings us to what we call customer uh, acquisition ma management. And that is uh, the use of uh, internet to either acquire new customers or to encourage offline customers or existing com customers that are buying offline to migrate uh, to online purchase or uh, services. So the, the, the idea is we want to get as many uh, online customers as possible, and that is by attracting new customers as well as converting those who are buying in, in our physical stores or in, in offline channels uh, to buy uh, online. And with respect to that, we want to focus on marketing communication, that in order to attract these new customers, we need to communicate. We have talked about raising 
uh, awareness. So we want to communicate to these customers so that they become uh, aware of our uh, products. And this is the subject of what we call marketing, uh, online marketing communications in order to, uh, uh, for in order to acquire uh, customers. Now, it's very easy to talk about uh, mar uh, marketing techniques for uh, online acquisition, but as I said in the beginning of this lecture that it, it can be very costly to acquire customers. Launching and conducting all these online campaigns involves money, and you have to make sure that this, uh, the, the money that you are investing in acquiring customer does not exceed the profit that you generate from those customers. So we need to strike a balance between the expenditure that we make in acquiring new customers and the revenue or po uh, profit that we can generate uh, from these customers. And because of that, you need to set a budget that as part of your planning, you have to uh, set a budget of how much you are willing to invest in order to obtain a particular number of customers that will generate a particular level of revenue. And because of that, we have uh, metrics, measures that we can use in assessing the effectiveness of our uh, campaigns versus the budget that we have set for our, for our business. So this is in different uh, levels from what we are spending in uh, reaching customers that are expo uh, exposing uh, customers to, to, to our marketing messages to maintaining uh, customers. So I will discuss each one of these uh, in turn. So first you, you want to set a budget for the volume or number of visitors that you would like uh, to reach. You know that you cannot reach everyone, so or if you want to reach everyone, it can be quite expensive. So you need to set a budget and a, a specific measure of how many people do you want to measure. And based on this figure, you can assess the effectiveness of your campaign, whether you have been successful or not. So the volume or number of visitors are those people that you uh, target uh, to, to be exposed or to, be, to become aware about your offering or your uh, website. And in the end, you will assess whether the target that you had set for yourself has been achieved uh, or not. And this could be in terms of uh, uh, calculating the number of page views of your website. So after launching a, 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 a campaign, after some time, you can assess how many views you have received following that campaign. And that will measure how effective the campaign uh, has been with respect to uh, reach or the number of uh, people that you have uh, been able uh, to, to reach. And then the second one is convention and bounce rate, that people have visited your website and you want to measure how effective uh, you have been able to convert those who have visited the website into specific marketing results, whether in terms of uh, lists, that is how many have expressed uh, interest with your uh, products, how many have bought, or how many have subs uh, subscribed. So you need to set a figure that uh, my target is to achieve this percentage of, uh, of co convention rate, that out of the people that I have reached, either I want 20% or 30% or 50 or whatever uh, figure that you would like to attain to be converted into specific marketing uh, results. And in the end, you will compare whether this objective has been attained or not. And then you want to set uh, cost per click uh, uh, targets. Usually when you, you buy uh, ads or when you pay, uh, say, a, a search engine or a platform like Facebook, uh, to display your your ads, you will pay. You you will have to bid. Normally, you place a price yourself that you think you think is valuable for that particular uh, ad. So you can decide, create a budget of, of um, how much you are willing uh, to to spend for, say, in terms of cost per click. Now, these are offered by different uh, platforms. It could be on a third party website, it could be on a search engine, so the rest will, will differ. Which means you need to decide your budget, how much are you uh, willing. 
and uh, platforms such as uh, Facebook, they, they have uh, uh, different forms of uh, budgets. You can decide whether on daily budgets or a, a lifetime of the campaign uh, uh, budget. So you, you have to decide how much are you willing to spend on that. And then you have um, cost per acquisition, and that is includes the cost of acquiring uh, the visitors to your website and converting them into specific marketing uh, uh, objective, whether a sale or, or marketing lead. So if you plus those two costs, then you have to set a target. How much are you willing to spend to acquire a, a customer? And then you want to measure return on investment. Now that is uh, uh, ROI, and that is uh, the ratio of either the profits that you, you generate uh, from a particular uh, refiner that is uh, a website or a search engine or any uh, third party that uh, promotes you, runs your campaign, over the amount that you have spent on, on that uh, refiner. So for each uh, of the, uh, the campaign that you, you run, in the end you want to compute how much profit you have generated divided by the amount of money you have spent. And that is return on the investment, that how much your campaign have been able to return on your, your, on your investment. Now, you can either use profit margin or other people may use the, the volume of total sales, depending on what is important uh, to you. So you can either have a ratio of total sales that have resulted from the campaign to the total amount spent on that campaign, or you can be specific on the profit. So this depends on your uh, on what is relevant for your for your business. And then you have also branding uh, metrics. So after a campaign, you would like to to know how much the campaign has been able to improve the performance of your. Uh, brand in your marketing. So in this could be in terms of how much people have become aware about your brand, how much interest uh, do, have they shown on your brand in, in terms of willingness uh, to, to, to purchase, how much are they willing to recommend, and other factors that uh, relate to the strength of your, uh, to, of your brand, or how much, say, they can recall your brand after the, the campaign. So you want to assess the extent to which the campaign has helped to strengthen your brand. And finally, you have to assess the lifetime uh, value. And a lifetime value for a customer is the prediction of the net profit that you can attribute for the entire uh, relationship of the future relationship with the customer. So you are expecting that you will have a uh, a relationship with a particular customer for a certain period of time and the net profit that will be generated out of that relationship is what constitutes a lifetime value of a customer. Now, this could be created by using simple mathematical uh, models, very simple heuristics, but also you could, uh, could involve very complex mathematical models in prediction of a lifetime uh, value for a customer. But in the end, you, you want to assess how much value you can generate from each particular uh, customer that you have uh, attracted as a result of your campaign. Now this brings us to what we call online marketing uh, communications, and that is the specific activities that we will now look at on how we can build uh, traffic to our uh, website. There are a couple of activities that we will go uh, through, and all this together are uh, categorized as traffic building campaigns or traffic building uh, activities. The aim is to attract as many customers as possible to our website. And this is a summary of the different activities that we can uh, engage with in order to acquire uh, customers. So we start with search marketing and then we'll talk about online uh, public relations, then we'll talk about online partnership, 
offline communication, social media, opt-in email, interactive ads, and, and offline communications. So today I will start talking about search engine uh, marketing. But before I do that, we need to consider and of course appreciate the, the fact that today most customers acquire information through search engines. So search engines have become important channels to, for customers to obtain information about uh, brands, about products, which means it's very important for a business to increase their, or to strengthen their presence uh, on, on search engines. Now we will talk first about Google, and that is because of all the search engines that we know, it's obvious that Google is the most uh, uh, prominent one or is the most popular. So before I, I, I discuss how you can enhance your presence in, uh, uh, among the search engines, we, we will look at how Google works, at least to get an overview how Google works, and then we will see how we can go around this uh, process to increase our presence uh, in the web. So this is basically the process involved when you enter a query in Google. So Google will receive your uh, key phrase, whatever you are, you, are, you are searching for. It will take it to its uh, web server. From the web server, this query, uh, the key phrase will be sent to index servers. The index server are like index of your book that they provide on, on information where or which pages contain words that relate to the key phrase that you have uh, entered. So this has, it's a sort of cross-referencing to, uh, to the web where they have information about the different pages that contain uh, the words that uh, match with the key phrase that you have entered. And this allows uh, extraction of the uh, the, those le relevant documents to take place. And then you can get a return uh, as a user. But how does Google index these pages? They have a process what they call crawling. Crawling as to crawl around the web. And this is a continuous uh, process where Google uses software processes called uh, uh, spiders or robots to identify the different web, uh, web, web pages of registered websites. And when these uh, websites are, uh, uh, when these web pages are uh, identified, they are indexed and kept in the index servers. So whenever you enter a key phrase where the, web, uh, the Google web server will take it to the index servers and they will identify the, the pages that contain words that match with, with your query to extract the documents and give you the results. Now, what does it mean to, to a business? And how can you exploit this understanding? So having an understanding on how, how Google works, we want to have an approach where we will promote uh, the presence of our business on the natural uh, results of search engines, that is, Whenever people enter certain uh, key phrases, we want our products, our website to appear first. And this is all about search engine uh, optimization. That you want to, uh, your products or your service to be dominant, prominent in the natural uh, results of search uh, engine. Now, different search engines have different algorithms for providing are these natural uh, uh, listings or, or natural uh, results for the key phrases. But at least there are some common factors that uh, you can consider in order to increase the presence of your business uh, on the web. And here we will discuss some of these uh, factors. The first factor is the frequency of occurrence of the key phrase in the body copy, that is, the main text contained in, the, in your web page should contain the key phrase that someone has entered in, in the search engine. And if that key phrase 
occurs more frequently in your uh, body copy or in your text, then it is likely that whenever someone is uh, searching for, for, uh, for, for that, uh, enters that key phrase, then it's more likely that you are, your page will show up more uh, prominent or will show up higher in the listings of the uh, natural results. However, you need to be careful because it's very tempting to identify the different key phrases or keywords that people are likely to enter when they are looking for your products. And because you know that frequency of occurrence uh, will boost up your, your uh, ranking, then it's tempting to duplicate these uh, key phrases. The search engine will penalize you for that. If you repeat those words too frequent, then the search engine will identify it as a spam. And being identified as a spam, which means they will filter you. So it is advised that at least you should keep the key phrase uh, occurrence in your uh, text two to three percent. When they begin to appear more frequently, that is uh, when the, the key phrase uh, density increases, you will be penalized and your web page will be uh, filtered. But the most important thing is try to identify the relevant key phrases that are people that people are likely to use when they are searching for the kind of products you are selling and include them in the text of your web page. Another factor that will contribute to your uh, web page to appear higher in the uh, listing of the uh, natural results of search engines is the, the kind of uh, links that, uh, you, uh, the, the link description that uh, you have. I'll put it more visible that usually your web page will have a, a short description about what it is about. So when you, you search on Google, you will see this description under the link. Now, if you can include the key phrase uh, in, in that description, then Google will, f will identify your page as more relevant to this uh, key phrase that uh, the, 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 the person has entered. And therefore, your page will appear more um, Prominent. Th this is something I searched uh, yesterday. How to market on social media. So as you, you, you can look, first, the title uh, uh, of the page includes the word social media. And then you have uh, the link itself with social media. And then the description of the page has social media. And then you have how. And this makes Google believe that this page is more relevant to my search. And then they, they will provide the, the second best, the third, and go and so on. So you need to understand which kind of search words that your customers are likely to use and make sure that those search words are included, or those potential key phrases are included in the description of your web page. And then another factor is the number of inbound links. Another thing that Google considers when they are bringing up the, the, the pages is how important your, your web page is. And that can be among, uh, uh, determined, among other things, by inbound uh, links, that how many people reference your, your web page. The more you have of uh, other websites referencing to your, uh, to your page, the more Google believes your page is important. Because these are like uh, people voting for you. That Google thinks as long as a lot of people are linking to your website, then something important must be there. However, it also depends on the quality of these sites that are linking to you. If these uh, sites uh, have higher ranking themselves and they link to you, then the more important your website will be perceived. We'll uh, talk later on about uh, public relations. That is creating uh, reciprocal referencing, that initiating relationships with other sites so that they can reference you and so that you can reference them so in order to boost each other in the uh, web presence. And then another factor is uh, page titles. And basically, this. Uh, the advice, it has to be very 
concise, specific, and you should not use irrelevant or unnecessary uh, words. So make sure that you, the title of your page contain the words uh, that are relevant or that are likely to be used uh, by your customers when they are searching in the web. And you can see this on this example. So besides uh, the link and description, this guy had social media even on the uh, title of the page. So having relevant uh, key phrases, uh, words in your title will help to, to boost up your position yeah, and the results of a uh, natural uh, search engine uh, results, sorry. And then you have uh, meta tags, and this is a applicable when you are is con containing the uh, the hypertext uh, markup language source file that is uh, the code for the uh, web page. However, this used to be important in the in the past. Google now says that they do not place uh, more importance on this. It's not very much uh, relevant. Uh, uh, today, but still some other search engines uh, consider it as one of the factors that they, they use in ranking uh, the, the web pages. And sometimes you, you have uh, pictures. The, the, the search engines will usually recognize text, which means when you have uh, uh, pictures, they will not read it. What does it mean? It means that you need to support uh, the graphics, the pictures with text, with alternative text that describe what these pictures are about. And once you, you do that, you can easily increase the possibility of your uh, web pages to appear uh, on top uh, of the listings of natural search engine results. And of course, this uh, fact has become uh, less and less important, but also it's required by law to provide alternative uh, text for the pictures we include in our web pages so that uh, the screen readers used by people who have vision impairment, uh, blind people, that they can use uh, to identify what we have on the web. So this is also required by law. It, it helps to, uh, to boost up your position in the search engine results, but also uh, it is required by, by law. Now, one thing that you need to, to know about this is there are so many factors that are used when it comes to identifying which factors are relevant, uh, which uh, uh, pages are re relevant. Because for Google, they are not only concerned about advertising to uh, businesses, but also they want to give the best experience to their users. So usually they would like to provide as relevant uh, pages to their users as possible which means there are so many factors that they consider which we, we haven't looked at. These are just common factors to all search engines. But more importantly, the algorithm that is used uh, for this process keeps on changing every day, which means whatever I'm teaching you today, it might be after a week or so becomes irrelevant. And what, what does that mean? That means you need to keep updating yourself. Whatever they are using today, they may not use it next year. So if you are in business and you are planning to use search engine optimization, this is something that you can update yourself from time to, t to time to know uh, what Google does or what other search engines uh, do. And likely, most of them are very open about the approach they use in doing, say, uh, in providing results to the various search words provided by customers. Now, related to search engine uh, optimization is paid search marketing, that you may want not only uh, to appear naturally in the search engine results, but uh, you want to boost up your position by paying these search engines to make your business uh, prominent in the web, and that is the, the paid search marketing. Typically, you, you pay for the ads that uh, Google, any other uh, uh, intermediary uh, that can 
provide you uh, with a service to display this, uh, this ads or your, uh, your communication. And usually the approach, as I said earlier, the used uh, to, to charge for ad placement is based on bids, that you place a bid, how much you are willing to, to pay so that your ad will be uh, shown on the web. And this is a sort of competition because people, d different businesses will set their bids. Now it's very uh, easy to believe that the higher uh, price you set, the higher your ad will be shown. But this is not the whole story. As I said, Google also is trying to show people, Google or even Facebook, is trying to show their users relevant ads or relevant information. Which means, besides bidding uh, higher, you also need to include relevant ads. So it, it starts with proper description of your ads. Google will not do it for you. You have to describe yourself. You have to find catchy phrases that can easily match with what people are looking for. Because what uh, happens is usually someone would search for something, and Google will propose, besides the natural uh, results, also they will propose some ads that could be relevant to that search people that uh, have made. Which means you need to include a uh, description that can easily uh, include the key phrases that your customers are likely uh, to use. I, I think I'm in one of the classes earlier, we, we, uh, I searched for, say, school. And then you get completely different results from writing shoes. Because usually the advertisers will specify who they want to target, and they, they'll give some text. And that will determine how prominent they, they appear. So the most important message in, in this respect is that besides bidding high, you also need uh, to, to consider relevance of your uh, communication to customers. Another uh, aspect that you need to consider is uh, ads uh, that we are also displayed on other websites. And Google does it through what they call uh, AdSense. That is, Google will place your ad to a particular website that they think is relevant. or corresponds to your ad. And this brings us to the same point that you need to ensure that you provide the description of your communication in a way that is, will appear relevant in, and in, in a way that customers can easily find this. Because Google will only place to those uh, websites that they believe the, their content match to your offering or to whatever you are advertising. So the more specific uh, you are and the more relevant you are, the more likely that Google will make your ad appear to a relevant third part uh, 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 site. And recently, in this February, I think on the 20th of uh, February, Google has launched a, a, a new service, and that is Call Only Campaigns. With this uh, campaign, when an ad is, uh, a message is displayed, actually a customer, if they click on this, they will not go to your website, but rather they will be uh, provided with a uh, telephone number to your customer and a, a brief description of what you can do with this customer. So usually a customer will be looking for something and Google will propose a telephone number for a service provider that can be uh, called for that particular thing you are looking for. So the aim with this uh, service is to encourage customers to call. And this is much more powerful than, uh, say, uh, pay-per-click uh, uh, service. Because sometimes people just pay without really having interest. But when someone uh, takes initiative to give you a call, then you know that this is really a potential customer that you can make a follow-up. So this will only be uh, shown on devices that can make a call. So it will not appear on, the, uh, on, on PC, but uh, mostly on devices that uh, can be used to, to make a, a call. And the aim is to encourage people to uh, call uh, businesses. So it's uh, one of the options that you, you can consider to advertise or to use with respect to increasing your presence in the web. 
Facebook has uh, adopted exactly what uh, Google is doing. So the model that Facebook is uh, uh, deploying with respect to, to us is exactly what Google uh, does, except that they have an advantage of knowing a lot about uh, customers with respect to our age, gender, marital status, our preferences. Then based on this, they can t target customers more precisely. So this is also an, an option that you can use to advertise uh, for, your, for your business. Now you need to be aware of the fake clicks. Usually when people talk about uh, payment per clicks, uh, one of the things that can come to your mind is your competitors can, can use, for instance, they can hire people to click your, your ads as many times as possible to bankrupt yourself because they know that each time someone clicks on your ad, you will pay for that. But the good news is this uh, system, service providers who are uh, displaying us, they have a system to track multiple clicks from the same PC th through the uh, IP address. So they can know if someone is trying to play games uh, or not. However, these people have also, you have some people out there that are providing service for making fake clicks. So there are software that can pretend to be humans located in different locations and they can make these uh, uh, fake clicks. Google claims that they have a software for tracking that or they're trying to make efforts to make sure that those kind of behaviors are identified. But also as a business person, and it, if you read in their d description, they say the, at, at the bottom of the, of the information uh, 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 sheet that they have, that you have also to take in, uh, initiative. Whenever you feel that someone is trying to make fake clicks on your, uh, on your ads, you have to report it. This is a, a report from uh, last year that fake clicks would cost marketers about 11.6 billion. So it's a serious issue that you need to, to think about that as you go for this approach of communication, something like this could apply. So that's it for today, and we will proceed on Friday.